This ruin is called House on Fire and you can see there's a number of sites here. I looked inside them all and the roofs of the small but slightly larger ones are blackened which means that people lived in there and cooked in them. This was a typical granary. You'll find these all over the place. I think there were food caches in case people had to evacuate or faced hard times. But this is fairly typical of the sites around here. Barely enough room in there to lie down, much less cook. This is another site. Looks like it was probably a granary that had structure in front of it. I would expect there were more under this alcove. Obviously a drainage path there for water that went down this way. High enough that a person can't get up and they'd have to approach from either side. Just over there as I came up, I ran into a rattlesnake. Not very big one, but we gave each other wide berth. This is a beautiful ruin up here. Looks like a circular kiva above ground. Then uh, you can see the quality of the walls in, back in there. The corners are nice. The mortar is all in place. These walls in many cases were plastered which made them even harder to detect. You can also see that in the foreground here, this one is inaccessible without a ladder or carved steps. As I turn around, you see the valley. I came up this relatively sheer sandstone, although you get good purchase on it. But there's the stream down below and just over that little lip that you can't see next to the first pine tree on the left there is a, a large, what I would call a swimming hole, uh, if I was an ancient. Good place to live, I think. This alcove has a commanding view of the valley below. It's difficult to get to with some exposure to get here. But uh, I'm fairly sure this was a construction site, some fallen stones. Looks like the roof fell in on a couple of spots. Over here you can see where someone has uh, been digging inappropriately. Uh, others have collected small bits of charred wood and mortar that were indicative of people living here. But most importantly are these. Those are the signatures and pictograms of people that were here once. Significant amount of mortar right there. This is one of those granaries I was talking about. That's far too little for a person to be in there, but it's difficult access to get up here. And if you'll notice up above here, there's a shelf. And I'm going to see if I can get up there and see if there's anything up there. Looks like there's construction stones on top of that rock over there. I'm on a, a, a ledge here. And there was clearly a structure here, colored to blend with its background. Fallen stones, wall stones right there. Then over here, there was more construction. Remnants of a small wall here. So I expect much of this was originally enclosed. There's pottery shards that somebody found and left. This was clearly all walled. Stone face here, so this was closed in. Remains of a structure here with, again, things people have found and left. That's an 800 year old corn cob. This pottery style is the oldest and it's frequently the cooking style. It's textured on the outside. I don't know why they did that, maybe to hold heat, but this is more structure here. And these, they did plaster them. You can see at the bottom, they plastered the insides of the walls and the outsides, which made them. Uh, less easy to detect. Here you can see the plaster inside. Likewise, the plaster outside here. A couple of holes here. I don't know if those are what those are for, but fascinating sight. 
protected by about a oh, 30 foot drop. But the granary is around the corner down there and it's just about the size of a, maybe a refrigerator. But I think that's a food cache. This is house on fire a little later in the day. Named for the lines in the roof. I'll back up and get a picture of them. And the light's right. It looks like this place is on fire. Nice sight. Not too far in either. It's been disturbed some, you can tell. People have put some rocks back in there. But, nice sight. 